What's up guys? I'm so happy to make this video today. It's 2022, um, a whole brand new year for fishing and adventures and all that kind of stuff. Um, today I'm going to be doing a video for you guys on exactly what I take steelheading with me. I'm going to go over just everything that's in my backpack. Um, I'm not going to do like a full gear rundown of like my rod and everything like that. I'm just going to do exactly like what is on my back when I'm fly fishing. For Great Lakes, steelhead, trout, whatever you want to call them. Um, and at the end of this video, I'm going to be updating you guys on this channel, where I want to take it, what I'm going to be doing in 2022, and what are some of my goals. So I hope you guys enjoy, and I think this will be a great video if you're new to steelheading or if you just want to like see what gear I bring out with me. Um, maybe if you're looking to like upgrade some of your gear or just looking to see like how I organize some of my gear. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and stick along. Okay, I'm going to be starting out with the net that I use for steelheading. I have a fish pond net. It is the El Jefe. I get a lot of questions about this net um, when I like post it on Instagram or like any pictures or anything like that that I have in there. People are always asking me what net I use. Um, I think this net is perfect for the job. Um, if you can measure your fish too, if you have like a long enough fish and it fits right in the side of the pack that I have. It fits right in here perfectly. The handle's like not too long or anything. It doesn't really get caught on anything. Um, and it's plenty long enough to land fish in most areas. I, maybe if you're on a bigger river, you want like a longer handle net. Um, but I also use it out of my canoe too for that kind of thing. So it works, <laughs> works pretty well. I've never met a fish that was too big for the net, so. Um, also, I'm gonna link all of the gear that I'm talking about below in the description. So it might take you to different websites um, to get this gear if you're interested in buying it. So next up, I'm gonna talk to you guys about the actual pack itself. This is um, my fish pond. I think it's called a Thunder Pack. They don't necessarily make this exact one anymore. They have like an upgraded version, which is extremely similar. They're both waterproof. Um, and they come in a variety of different colors. So this pack is, it's pretty big. I know a lot of people use like sling packs and stuff like that, which I do like, but I usually have like camera gear with me and I usually have a lot of stuff with me when I'm fishing. So I usually prefer like a bigger pack and I also use it for like bass fishing and stuff like that in the summer. So inside of this, I have all my gear for when I'm steel hunting. Um, I also haven't cleaned this out since the last time I went fishing, so it's very like this is exactly what I take with me. So first of all, hand towel, which is something that a lot of, like, I definitely would forget to bring with me when I first went steel hunting, but as soon as your hands get cold or like in the water from handling fish, you're gonna want a dry towel to wash them off on, or like to dry your hands off on, because your hands are going to be freezing. So, next up, start off with some fly boxes for you guys. Um, I usually carry two to three fly boxes with me. Right now in my pack I have two um, boxes with nymphs. I also bring a streamer box with me sometimes, but I think I left that one out on my truck. But my small streamer box has like wooly boogers, some zonkers, stuff like that. And actually I do have some in this box as well. Um, so here's my smaller box and my bigger box. They're very similar. They have like very similar flies in them. Do a close up of each one. Some of the flies are falling out, but here, oh, I don't know where that went, but here is half of box one. I've got egg flies. I've got squirmy wormies. I've got a lot of like my flashier flies in this section of the box. Flies that I would use on like in like dirtier water, that kind of thing. And on the other side, I have just a lot of your typical like smaller nymphs that are falling out, stone flies. There's a rundown. Hopefully it's pretty clear. So these what I would use in like clear water, smaller streams, stuff like that. And I would also use this, take this box with me when I'm doing inland fishing as well. I wouldn't really use the egg fly section, but these nymphs I'll use for all the trout that I go after. This box, I kind of have the same deal going on. I just had too many flies, so I just made two boxes. Um, 
Here's this one. That was the one I showed you. It has some streamers in it. And then I have, this side isn't really, these are just like big bugs. Big bug section. And I've got some of your typical like stone flies, like the crazy like egg stones. Got some random flies just stuck in here, that kind of thing. Like I said, I just, I was fishing last week, I think, and I didn't clean any of this out. I was just showing you guys what exactly I've got. Oh, there's a good fly. I've got some hand-tied flies in here, as well as like flies that I get off line. I buy some flies from like Sierra Trading Company has like good discount flies and um, Big Y Fly Company is where I buy a lot of my flies, especially like stone flies and stuff that aren't is easy to tie for me. I tie my squirmies and I tie a lot of egg flies. That's about as extensive as my fly tying has gotten. So let's see what else we got. This little box here. Oh, that's upside down. Got a little trout on it. Um, and I have a lanyard attached and some little snippies come in handy so you don't use your teeth because that's bad. Um, this box, I actually don't, I've had this for a long time. I might have gotten it from like a local fly shop or something, but it's kind of cool because you can keep all like your little goodies in there. So I've got different colored, like the beads that I usually use, I'll like use the most often, I guess, are in some of these compartments. Um, I've got some sinkers. I think those are the tin sinkers. I've got some of the um, trout pegs to stop the beads. And I've got some random flies in there. I have barrel swivels, really small barrel swivels. Um, if you don't want to tie a blood knot, let me see if I can find one. I also dumped this, so it's a little all over the place, but like, if you can see that. I don't know if it's gonna, I'll focus. Okay, so I use like really small barrel swivels like that to connect my leader to my tippet. Um, so yeah, this is like my go-to, has all my stuff in it, and I'm always ready with it, so. That's one of my most important pieces of gear, like as long as I have that and the flies, I'm usually pretty set, but there's other stuff you might need. Oh yeah, these, okay. So for my bobbers, or indicators, or whatever you want to call them, um, I used to use thing of bobbers. But they, they do have a tendency to like kink your line and stuff like that, and that gets a little frustrating. So I'm a big fan of these, um, the airlock indicators. I have two sizes. I have some bigger ones, I have some smaller ones. Um, when I'm still hunting, I usually use the bigger ones, but sometimes smaller ones come in handy, especially if the water's really clear, the fish can be finicky or they're spooky, that kind of thing. So I actually just bought these, that's why they're still in the package. Um, so yeah, those, those are great. I love those. I just got some leaders chilling in there. These are my go-to. They're pre-looped, um, so they're really easy to attach. I have 3X, 7.5 foot. Um, they're 8.2 pounds. This is the size that I always use. Um, but if you buy a three pack, that should get you through a while. I mean, I keep my leaders on for, until they start getting really like, crinkled or like start like curly cueing on you they can last quite a while next i've got gloves these are from cabela's they're guide wear gloves um they're pretty nice because i don't, personally i don't like wearing gloves when i fish but some days when it's super cold like today it's like negative two or something which i'm not fishing but i also use these for ice fishing um but you can take the little thumb off so that's fun, that works nice. You can get your little fingers all toasty and cover them up. But yeah, these are great. And if it's really cold, I stick my hand warmers inside of them. And I think I have a size small, um, but I'll link those in the description. I love those gloves, they work great. I forgot about this. Okay, so I actually have this little box as well. It's very similar to the black box that I showed you. It's just smaller. So this is just another box full of beads. Um, these are actually all glass beads. I get them from Creek Candy Bead Supply, or Bead Company, I think it is. Um, and I use the glass beads 
if the water is like high and stuff like that. Well, if you have like, like if, if you're having trouble getting your setup to go to the bottom, glass beads help a lot to really get that set up down to the bottom quickly. So there's a lot of situations where I will use the glass beads. Um, so I keep a couple different colors. I don't carry them with me. Like I don't carry every color I have with me, just like a good sample. And um, just in case I need them or in case there's a situation where I think they will come in handy. Okay, so next I have my tippet. So I use fluorocarbon. And I have three different sizes with me. I have the six pound that I just showed you. I have a four pound and then I have an eight pound. I also have 10 and 12, but they're not in my backpack right now. Um, I don't always carry them because I haven't fished any of those like big rivers. Four to eight pounds is pretty much um, a pretty good range for the fish that I'll be fighting. And I've never really had issues landing big fish on like six pound tippet. extra pair of socks always comes in handy. If your feet get cold or your feet get wet, you know, it can be a bad day. So I always have extra socks, hand warmers, gloves, all this kind of stuff. I do carry some of it in my pack, but I always have a tote in my truck with emergency gear. Uh, I have a whole set of clothes. I have socks. I have everything in case something does go wrong because steelheading can be dangerous, um, especially in the cold temperatures. If you get wet, if you trip and you fall, it can be a really sticky situation or it can be a very dangerous situation. And um, it's good to have all that extra gear. Speaking of staying warm, I do have a pack of toe warmers. In here, um, I do have hand warmers as well, but they're not in my backpack right now. They're actually in my truck. I bought those in bulk um, at the beginning of the year just to have them because I always use them. I'm always fishing with people too and they're getting cold. Like it's just a cold situation sometimes. So I always have extra warmers with me, hand and toe warmers. So I do have a random junk bag in my backpack. I have some jigs in here. Um, I've got some extra colored beads. Uh, I've got some random flies and some streamers and some, I don't even know. Just a little bit of everything, like backup in case I need it. Um, I probably won't, but it's there. I don't know, just kind of like a junk pile, but I have extra like uh, indicators, extra leaders, extra everything. I think there's even extra flies in there. So just kind of like a variety of different things. Next, I just have a pair of pliers. Um, this is actually like my backup pair of pliers. I have another one that I put, I have like forceps in my waders when I'm fishing just for like easy access, but these ones are a little heavier duty, but they work good. Okay, well I thought I had more stuff in my backpack, but that's pretty much sums it up. Um, a lot of times I'll have like drinks in there, snacks in there, stuff like that. And last but not least, I always have my flask with me. I got that when I was in Montana from this really cute little fly shop. So yeah, I always have some, you know, to catch a big fish, you gotta take a shot. So yeah, that is all the gear that I have in my backpack um, while I'm steelhead fishing. I can do, if you guys want me to, I can go through a video where I go through all my gear, like my waders, my rod, reel what I have in my truck. Like I said, I have like a tote full of stuff in my truck, all that kind of stuff. But this is what I take on the water with me in my backpack and what exactly I use. So thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope this is helpful to any like beginners or not even beginners, but like anyone who just want to see what I take with me when I go um, steel hunting, if this is different from what you take with you. I really appreciate you guys watching this video today. Um, I did want to take a couple minutes to go over what exactly I have planned for 2022. Um, I know I started this channel in January of 2021. And since then, I've only posted about six videos or so. I definitely wanted to post more, but I, I didn't, I didn't have a GoPro. I did, I was like having trouble filming on my phone and not enough storage on my phone. So I did end up, I bought a camera and I bought a nice GoPro. So I really want to get into doing more videos. And I don't know if this is necessarily gonna be like these more like educational videos or like the fly fishing like adventure videos. Um, I wanna do a little bit of both. So my goal for 2022 is I wanna to try to get a video out at least every other week. 
Um, I want to go over steelhead fishing, bass fishing. I do a little bit of everything. I don't just fly fish. I do a lot of spin fishing as well. So I would really like to incorporate a little bit of everything that I do. And I would like to make more videos for you guys because it seems like the videos that I did post, people seem to like them and um, I got a lot of positive feedback on them. So I'd love to do more of that stuff for you guys. So um, the next video you guys will be seeing from me, I'm gonna be doing like, I think it's gonna be a three part kind of series of my fall and early winter steelheading recap. Um, I have all the videos and I just kind of have to like mash them together because I didn't necessarily get like, every time I went I didn't get like a video, like a full cut video, you know, like I catch like a fish here, a fish there. Um, so I want to put those all together and get at least three videos out of that content for you guys. Um, so you're going to be seeing those coming up in the next week or two, so stay tuned for that. And also, I'm just really excited for 2022 and seeing where it takes us. I have a couple trips planned. Um, a lot, I always have fishing plan, steel hiding plan for the spring and bass fishing. We have a boat now, so we're going to do a bunch of smallmouth fishing videos. Um, all that kind of stuff. Brook trout in the mountains. I love doing those videos and that kind of thing. So I'm super excited about that. And thank you guys um, so much for watching. If you guys have any requests of videos that you want to see or anything like that, comment below and let me know. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.